Hello, how are you? My name is Robert, and from now on I thank you for watching this video. Today we spend a lot of time in our houses and homes, together with our loved ones, that is why we want our houses to be a pleasant and comfortable place, not like this place where my time machine has left me to make this video. However, sometimes a very unpleasant problem can arise and cause our homes to deteriorate and can even affect our health. I am referring to humidity by condensation. This is a major and sometimes too common problem. Therefore, if you do not want your house to become an unpleasant place, or if your work is related to this topic, this video can be of help. The first step to solve this problem is to better understand why it occurs, and for this purpose we are going to look at physical concepts such as absolute humidity, relative humidity, saturation and dew point. We will also see instruments that will help us to detect and quantify this problem, such as hygrometers and infrared cameras. Finally, we will speak about the solutions that can be implemented to solve or minimize this problem. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Many houses suffer from a very unpleasant problem, structural dampness, which manifests itself in the form of areas with black spots, peeling paint, mold, bad odors, wet surfaces, etc. In addition to unpleasant aesthetics, dampness can lead to health problems. A damp home could lead to mold, which is a microscopic organism that produces spores that spread into the air and can cause asthma. It can also lead to other diseases such as sinusitis, or lung infections such as bronchitis and the people who live there. In this video we are going to explain the possible causes, detection and resolution of a particular and very common type of humidity that appears especially in winter, dampness caused by condensation. The air we breathe is a mixture of different gases, among which is the oxygen that we need for the activity of the cells of our body. However, oxygen is not the gas that is in the highest proportion in the air. As we can see in the graph, air is made up of approximately 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and in a lesser proportion, noble gases, water vapor and carbon dioxide. Since air can contain water vapor, we can talk about the concept of humidity, and specifically, we can define absolute humidity as the concentration of water vapor in the air, expressed in grams per cubic meter. This amount of water vapor in the air can vary from values close to 0 grams per cubic meter, to values of up to 40 grams per cubic meter in tropical areas, although there is normally no more than 12 grams per cubic meter. In this sense, we can consider air as a kind of sponge, which absorbs more or less water depending on the pressure and temperature. The higher the temperature, the greater the amount of water vapor that the air can hold per cubic meter. It is as if the sponge gets bigger when the temperature rises and shrinks when the temperature drops. And what happens to a damp sponge when we compress it a little? That the water it contains begins to flow. Something similar happens with air. It can happen that the air has a quantity of water vapor at a certain moment less than its maximum capacity. Under these conditions, as the air cools, its capacity to contain water vapor will be reduced. If the temperature continues to drop, there will come a time when this capacity to hold water vapor is just the current concentration of water vapor. At that moment we say that the air is saturated with water vapor and at that temperature it is called the dew point. If the temperature drops a little more, it will be impossible for the air to keep all that water vapor it contains, so part of it must go into a liquid state, that is, the condensation of water vapor occurs. As we have discussed, absolute humidity refers to the total mass of water vapor in a given volume of air, for example 12 grams per cubic meter. However, since the capacity of the air to contain water vapor depends on the temperature, it is much more useful and practical to express the humidity, not in absolute value, but as the percentage between the amount of water vapor that we have at this moment in the air, in relation to the maximum amount of water vapor that we could have at that temperature. This is the concept of relative humidity, RH. Taking this definition into account, a relative humidity of 100% implies that we have reached saturation, and the air no longer admits any more water vapor. As we can see, using relative humidity gives us a better view of the humidity present in a process or in a space like our house. 
Measuring relative humidity is very important both for industrial processes and for determining comfort, also in our own homes and in public buildings, shopping centers, etc. Instruments that measure humidity are called hygrometers, such as the Fluke 971, which measures relative humidity, temperature, dew point, and wet bulb. Let's now see all this in a more fun way. Suppose we are in the living room of our house, which is oriented towards the warm area. If we use the Fluke 971 we can determine that the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, the relative humidity is 75% and the dew point is 15.4 degrees Celsius. Under these conditions we can have around 13 grams of water vapor per cubic meter, and the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can contain under these conditions is around 17.3 grams per cubic meter. Now let's invite our friend Sponge Bob to our living room. After a certain time, Bob have absorbed those 13 grams per cubic meter present in the air. Now suppose that Bob moves to another room in the house, a little cooler, where the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. Under these conditions, Bob's capacity to store water vapor will have dropped to 13.3 grams per cubic meter, although he still has room to hold a little more water vapor. Since he has 13 grams and the total capacity of him is 13.3 grams, his relative humidity is 90.4%. Again Bob moves to another room a little cooler, where the temperature has dropped a little more, precisely to 15.4 degrees Celsius, which was the initial dew point. In this situation, Bob's capacity to store water vapor exactly coincides with the initial amount of 13 grams per cubic meter, in this way Bob is in a critical situation because he has the maximum capacity to contain water vapor, he is in its saturation point and its relative humidity is 100%. If you now move to another room a little colder, for example 15 degrees Celsius, its capacity to contain water vapor is only 12.8 grams per cubic meter and therefore it cannot maintain the 13 grams it had in the previous cases, so it must condense part of its water vapor to reduce it to those 12.8 grams per cubic meter. Once the excess water vapor has condensed, its relative humidity remains 100%. If Bob moves back to another even colder room, for example at 14 degrees Celsius, his capacity to contain water vapor will be reduced again, now to 12.1 grams per cubic meter, so he will again have to lose water vapor by condensation in liquid water. In this way, if the temperature is further reduced, the process of condensation of water vapor into liquid water will intensify. This is the physical basis of the process of formation of humidity by condensation in our houses, and as we see it depends on two aspects, the amount of water vapor that is present in the air and its temperature. These two aspects can lead to humidity problems with different solutions. For example, when we cook and the water boils in the pot, the water turns into a gaseous state and integrates into the air, increasing its relative humidity. Likewise, in winter when clothes are washed and cannot be dried outside or we do not have a dryer, we may be tempted to place the clothes on the radiators to dry them. In this way the water contained in the clothes evaporates and again it is incorporated into the air around us, increasing the relative humidity. If due to these circumstances or others, we generate so much water vapor that we saturate the air, it will not admit more water vapor and it will condense into liquid water. If the house is well insulated and the temperature of the walls and floors is practically the same, then the condensation process will not have a preferred place and the humidity could appear anywhere in the house. In these cases the solution is to reduce the relative humidity below the saturation point. Venting to the outside, for example by opening windows, can help reduce relative humidity. Dehumidifiers, both electrical and chemical, can also be used to reduce such humidity. Nature can also be an ally, as there are indoor plants that can absorb some of this moisture, such as English ivy or the lily of peace. If you like plants, I advise you to consult a specialist to guide you in choosing the most appropriate plant for your environment. Now suppose another situation like the one we have seen with our friend Spongebob. Suppose that our room is at about 20 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 75%, in these circumstances the dew point would be at 15.4 degrees Celsius, so in theory we should not have saturation or condensation. However, that temperature of 20 degrees is not constant throughout the room. If the walls face the outside and are poorly insulated, it is possible that in winter, in the worst insulated areas, 
the surface temperature of the wall is below the 15.4 degrees Celsius of the dew point, which means that locally, in that specific area, air saturation will be reached and the water vapor will condense into water droplets. Many times, the affected areas are associated with thermal bridges in the building zone structure, such as columns, beams and floors. In other cases it may be the walls themselves. In general, the colder it is outside and the less insulated the structure and building envelope are, the lower the interior surface temperature of poorly insulated areas and the more intense the condensation process will be. In this case, the previous solution of ventilating will probably not have an adequate effect and at the same time it may not be feasible to ventilate the house in winter, especially at night, precisely due to the low temperatures. In this case, the solution would be to raise the surface temperature of the affected areas on walls, ceilings and floors, to prevent their temperature from falling below the dew point temperature. This is achieved by improving the insulation of the building, for which different techniques can be used depending on the particularities of the construction and the location of the humidity. For example, the external surface of the facade with humidity problems, normally the one facing the coldest area, could be covered with an insulating material with a suitable aesthetic that simulates, for example, decorative exterior bricks. Likewise, there are techniques for injection of insulating material inside the air chamber of the walls. For example, polyurethane, polystyrene or cellulose. It is also possible to find insulating materials in do-it-yourself stores so that the user himself can cover areas of walls and ceilings. In some cases, it will be enough to get the surface temperature of the wall to rise a few degrees thanks to the insulation to avoid condensation. In any case, the user has at his disposal professional companies specialized in the analysis and resolution of this type of insulation problems, so it is highly advisable to consult them. Additionally, it should be considered that insulation problems not only have consequences at the level of humidity problems, but also at the level of energy consumption, so that adequate insulation of houses can also mean considerable savings in heating and air conditioning, thus offsetting the cost of the investment. Until now we have considered these two problems, excessive humidity and insulation problems separately, but in reality they are likely to coexist, so the analysis of the problem may not be so simple hence the recommendation to consult with specialists in the field. They have adequate measuring instruments that allow them to analyze the problem adequately and precisely determine the most efficient solution or solutions. To analyze the problem of humidity by condensation we have at our disposal, among other instruments, hygrometers such as the Fluke 971, which will allow us to measure the temperature of the air, its relative humidity and the dew point. In this way we can know if the temperature and relative humidity are within the values recommended by international regulations such as OSRE 55, or EN 16798-1, etc. In Spain, for example, the regulation of thermal installations in buildings, right, establishes these values. Likewise, the Fluke 971 provides us with a dew point, which, as we have seen, is a very important piece of information to know if the condensation of water vapor can occur. Other very useful instruments for the analysis of humidity are infrared cameras, which allow us to visualize the surface temperatures of walls and ceilings. Infrared cameras are a fundamental work tool for energy efficiency technicians, building forensics, masons, manufacturers of insulating materials and insurers, both to detect humidity problems and to improve the energy efficiency of buildings. Infrared cameras such as the Fluke TIS-60 Plus have a very useful function for moisture inspection. They have the temperature alarm function. This function allows you to enter a lower limit temperature, which in our case will be the dew point value provided by the Fluke 971 hygrometer. With this temperature, the camera will show in infrared on a normal digital image, only those points that with a temperature below the provided dew point temperature, in this way we can quickly and visually identify those areas where condensation is most likely to be occurring. Infrared cameras such as the Fluke TIS-60 Plus, will allow us to work with two different techniques for the study of humidity. One of them is the one that we have already mentioned, the use of the low temperature or dew temperature alarm to identify the areas in which condensation may be occurring, when it is at a temperature lower than the dew point. In this way we can do an inspection in winter, for example at night, which is when the affected interior walls are surely colder, and thus we can detect those surfaces at a temperature below the dew point. On the other hand, 
Another aspect to take into account in infrared cameras for humidity inspection is their thermal sensitivity. A thermal imager like the aforementioned Fluke TIS-60 Plus has a thermal sensitivity of less than 0.045 degrees Celsius, which means that it can detect temperature variations on walls as small as 0.045 degrees Celsius. This is also essential to carry out inspections not only at night when it is colder, but at any time of the day. Since the walls can be made of more or less porous materials, that superficial condensation that occurs at night will be transmitted to the interior of the wall, so that during the day the wall will maintain a significant degree of humidity. In this way, if the temperature of the wall rises during the day because it is less cold outside, part of the water it contains will evaporate again, taking energy from the wall and causing it to cool slightly in relation to the area it does not have humidity. Thanks to such good sensitivity, a thermal imager such as the Fluke TIS-60 Plus can detect that small temperature variation that occurs during the day, which will be another indication that the technician performing the inspection can use to assess the need for a more localized solution, or on the contrary a more global solution to the entire facade. Finally, once the possible areas of humidity have been identified with the infrared camera, the technician has at his disposal contact humidity meters such as the Amprobe MT-10 which will allow him to verify the humidity of the wall at different points and properly document the report. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. In this way we have analyzed the problem of humidity by condensation, reviewing the concepts of absolute and relative humidity and dew point. We have seen the physical aspects associated with the condensation process on walls, as well as the instruments that we can use to detect moisture and the possible solutions. I hope this video has been of interest to you. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, don't forget to drop a like, so that I can know that you liked it, and I can program new videos on this topic. In a future video we will see more technical concepts related to the inspection of buildings and their energy efficiency, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon.